Hello, and welcome back to the He for She Summit. My name is Taylor Nicole Rogers, and I am a correspondent at the Financial Times. I also have the honor of moderating this conversation on the role of men. Now, as we know, women have always been at the forefront of the struggle for gender equality, but we can be so much more effective when we have the support of our male counterparts. And that is what we're here to discuss today. We have a lot to cover, so let me go ahead and introduce our superstar panel. I'm delighted to welcome Jess Staley. He is the CEO of Barclays. Henri Broussel also joins us. He is the Chief Operating Officer, End-to-End -end Design to Delivery at Dono. And the Global Managing Partner of McKinsey rounds out our panel. A big welcome to Kevin Speeder. Jess, why don't I start with you? In a male-dominated industry like finance, how do you begin to engage the men in your organization in the work towards gender equality? I think the first thing is, uh, obviously starting with the leadership, is to recognize, in my experience, the most powerful instrument to, uh, uh, to create loyalty and to keep uh, employees that want to stay with your firm is to embrace diversity. Barclays is just a function of our intellectual capital. And I believe embracing diversity and embracing gender uh, is the most effective way to keep and retain and to hire intellectual capital. And that's why it's so important. Thank you for sharing that. Henri, Dono has over 100,000 employees across 57 countries, I believe. So how, do, how have you engaged the men in your organization, you know, despite their different cultures and different generations? Our commitment has been to implement a gender neutral parental policy. And the, this policy helps to transform the stereotype that caregiving is predominantly a woman responsibility. Each family is unique and it's key to provide employees with the flexibility to take paid leave based on the caregiver role they want to play, not based on their gender. We have a program called EVE, that, which is a behavior change program based on the conviction that men and women are co-responsible of the gender glass ceiling within the organizations. Men, because they probably don't voice enough, not asking for promotion for pay rise, and men, because they don't realize women have a different behavior, have a different angle, don't, don't talk the same way. And with Eve, we have really changed the mindset, helping playing uh, a rude role in the career path while being fully aligned with the e 4 she philosophy. Thank you, that all sounds great. Kevin, my next question is for you. You know, McKinsey specializes in developing manage management strategies for others, but I'm wondering what strategies you've employed within the firm to make sure that all of your male partners are engaged in your efforts towards gender equality. How do we enroll men to really be the force for good that they can be in this, that they become allies for change? I heard Henri talk about the EVE program and I heard Jess talk about the anecdotal story he told about people in the Barclays context. Well, for us, what we've tried to build is a story of allyship where people understand that we can collectively make a difference. In fact, our program is called All In. We're all in this together, men and women. And we want to achieve gender balance because we know that that is a better outcome for all of us. And that means that we've spent a lot of time building up ally programs around the firm, around the world, inclusive leadership training for our partners and our colleagues, and really a step forward in terms of making sure that there's a very visible commitment that isn't just coming from the top, but really permeates the whole of McKinsey. As we all know, the past year has fundamentally changed all of our workplaces. Because of the COVID crisis, many of us are working from home or struggling to find childcare as schools are closed. Some of us are trying to parent and work at the same time. And unfortunately, women have borne the brunt of this impact on our working lives. And so Jess, could you tell me a little bit about what needs to be done to make sure that progress that we've seen in the workplace for women has not gotten erased? If there's a silver lining to this pandemic, 
Taylor, it very possibly may be what it will do to uh, embracing diversity and particularly helping women in the workforce. <clears throat> and that's because what we've all learned is we can keep, you know, the McKinsey's and the Knowns and the Barclays of the world functioning with the majority of our people working from home. I actually think the pandemic, one of the benefits will be uh, reinforcing the flexible workspace, which is I think very powerful for helping uh, our senior women employees at Barclays. Absolutely. Um, Omri, I'm wondering, what do you think business leaders need to do to support the women in their organizations, not just during the pandemic, but afterwards? We have ensured that our employees and the women working within the organization and in our ecosystem worldwide are fully supported through extensive coverage of health, childcare, adaptation to the quarantine times, flexibility, well being programs, because working from home is a very different pattern than working in an office. So we, we implemented a lot of programs that we are continuing and we intend to continue for the next years. So for instance, in UK and Ireland, uh, we have developed working parent online group coaching program to provide additional support to working parents, as well as an economic support mechanism for employees whose family circumstances may have changed because of COVID. Wonderful, thank you. Kevin, I'm wondering, what do you think companies can do to prioritize gender equality as our workforce continues to look towards the next phase? I think when it comes to the office and the notion of creating greater flexibility so people can work, and women in particular, can work in a fashion that is much more realistic given their personal and other priorities, that is the opportunity we have now, and it's essential we seize it. It's why when people say things like hybrid work and, and start to talk about that as an idea, at one level I agree, but at another level, we need to really make sure we don't end up creating a whole second class citizenry of folk who do not come to the office versus folk who do go to the office. And in that moment, we could actually go backwards. We could make it much worse. We've all been on the video conference where you got four people in a room together in person, two people on the video coming in remotely and very quickly you forget about the two people coming in remotely and things get worse for that group. They become less relevant. So it's not straightforward. We need to really work at this notion of hybrid work and make it relevant and well, well executed for everyone, but women in particular. Absolutely, and that flows perfectly into the next thing I wanted to ask you, Jess. What do we need to do today in the next six months, in the next year, to make sure that we hold on to the momentum that we have today? Ultimately, we will solve this when men and women recognize that, that the senior women have to become part of the network. And men have to move forward to building personal relationships with senior women and vice versa, so that, so that the senior town of women become part of the network and therefore become part of the solution of a, of a firm going forward. In the UK, we created a function five years ago where every committee at that level of the bank, every management committee has to have an ex officio member. And in almost all cases, the ex officio member is a woman. And it is simply to, to, to get senior women access to the network of an executive committee or a management committee. Thank you. Henri, I'm wondering from you, what actions do you believe men need to take to support our work towards gender equality? As male leaders, being in the decision-making position, we have the power to change the game and to challenge the status quo faster than a lifetime. We must be advocates for giving not only the voice, but also the power for women to lead the conversation, to lead the network and to make the decision. Actually, we need to change the power dynamics. We took the commitment to say in 225, we will be at full gender parity at the, all the senior leadership position. 
And I think this is a very strong commitment. And now everybody in the organization is really accountable for this. Thank you. And I certainly share your hope that commitments like the one you just described can get us to true equality during our lifetimes. Kevin, I'm going to leave you with the last word. What can we do to make sure that we do see equality in our lifetimes? I completely agree with Jess's point about actively sponsoring women so that they're part of the network, they are supported, and they, they do feel that they're being systematically encouraged to keep moving along the development curve towards senior leaders. That's vital. It's not happening in sufficient form. It's happening in some companies. But how do we make that more institutionally? Because women are not promoted to the next job at the same rate as men. That's a vital point of change that has to move forward. So look, I believe we can make this progress, but it is going to require a step up from where we are. Otherwise we will not achieve this goal within our lives, but I also believe that we can. And I think with the courage, with the wisdom, and with indeed the actions that we've been talking about today, that progress can be made and let's hope it is. For my two daughters sake and sure for all the others who are part of this with uh, daughters they want to see in senior leadership roles going forward. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for being here today. I feel like I've learned so much from our wonderful panel, and I personally am feeling hopeful that we will achieve the equality we've been talking about through some of the measures that our great panel has brought up today. So thank you all for taking the time to join us. I really appreciated your attention, and I am looking forward to seeing the rest of the summit with all of you. Thanks again.